The movie opens up in a church, we can see a preacher conducting a funeral service for a 39-year-old Cody Bertrand. His mother and brothers are all present to pay their last respect to their older brother Cody. Respect turns to insult when the pastor passes judgment on Cody, saying he was a bad person when he was alive, and his wish now could be that his brothers would totally deviate from that path. The pastor accuses the mother of Mrs. Linda for not training her boys right and letting them cause havoc in town. Mrs. Linda becomes fed up from all the insults so she orders her boys to pick up Cody corpse. She blames the pastor's daughter who is married to her son Dallas for trying to make them fit into the society that will always judge the Bertrands. Commotion ensues in the church as Cody brothers picks him up from the casket as instructed by their furious mom. Ava, the pastor's daughter, tries to calm the situation, but Mrs. Linda rebukes her for embarrassing them in Dallas. Her husband wouldn't even look her in the eyes. The Bertrands drag Cody out of the church, while the pastor allows them saying they can have the body, but God has already passed judgment on his soul. After the service, Ava meets up with her best friend Rona, she had came to the funeral with her husband Jim. Rona tries to make Ava see that the Bertrands are totally in the wrong, but Ava doesn't think Rona should be giving straight shots at this time, cause the timing is obviously not right. Jim who happens to be the best friend of Dallas, Ava's husband, decides to go check on him and his family but Ava tells him not to worry as it's her duty as the wife to check up on her husband. Ava goes over to meet her parents, her father Clarence the pastor, apologizes for the scene he caused today he tried to control himself, but the terrible things the Bertrands had done wouldn't let him speak nothing but the truth. He advises his daughter that it's time for her to draw the line and end things with Dallas, but she tells them she's trying to be a good wife and she isn't giving up on her husband anytime soon. Her parents assures her that they will always support her no matter the situation. Later that night, Ava goes over to meet Dallas, she tries to comfort him, but he yells at her saying she had set his family up by inviting them to the church, although Ava just wanted to make sure Cody had a proper funeral. Dallas believes she tried to put his family up for embarrassment. He yells at her saying she is always trying to change him and not love him for who he is. He becomes angry and chases her away from his truck. Ava goes back in her car, waiting to see if she can still talk to Dallas when he's all calm, but Dallas leaves with his brothers. Ava decides to follow them up, she meets up with the brothers at a local bar. She begs Morris the eldest one to ask Dallas to come back home cause he has to wake up early for work tomorrow. Just as she was heading out, she meets up with her childhood friend Benji. After they exchange pleasantries, Dallas and his brothers comes over to confront him, they had beaten up Benji once when they were still kids. They try to beat him up again but the pub owner chases them away with his shotgun. As they try to leave, Morris engages in a fight with Dallas because he wanted to drive even when he was drunk. Later that night, Ava wakes up to see Dallas in the toilet, he sits there blaming himself for killing his dad. He tells Ava that he isn't worth any good and she shouldn't be with him. But Ava comforts him saying, she has seen the good in him and she will always be there for him. The next morning, she prepares breakfast as she tries to leave for work, but Dallas comes up with an attitude again and refuses to speak to her. Ava goes to pick her best friend Rona, as they both work in the same company, Rona apologizes for being insensitive during the funeral, but she still advises Ava that she's too good to be putting up with Dallas, he doesn't appreciate her and she shouldn't be in the picture anymore. Ava doesn't seem to agree with this. Later that night, after work, Ava and Dallas are supposed to meet up with Jim and Rona for a dinner. Ava promises to be fast with her preparations, she just wants to have a shower as she had just returned from work, but as soon as she finished dressing up, Dallas had gone without her. Rona is angry that Dallas left Ava at home so she goes outside to wait for her friend. Ava seemed not to be too upset with it, as she tried to play nice with Dallas, but he yells that his wife is always nagging and telling him what to do, he shouts at Ava at the restaurant and then demands a divorce. Jim tries to talk sense into his friend, but he walks out of the restaurant. A teary Ava goes back home with her friend Rona, on their way she tells Rona that she has given her best years to Dallas, and now she is getting to 40 which means no other man would look at her twice. Rona disagrees saying she hasn't even lived her best years yet and she is still very beautiful. When they got home Rona gives Ava an envelope that contains all the bad things Dallas had done to her since they got married. Although she doesn't want to accept it, Rona tells her that it'll help her ease through her heartbreak. Ava decides to take a week off at her parents' house. She tells them about how Dallas wants to divorce her despite everything she had done for him. Her parents comfort her saying she tried her best. The next few days Ava got back into track exercises to heal through her pains. Ava's mom break into tears after she read the note containing all the bad things that Dallas had done to Ava, she blames herself for not being there for her daughter. 
Ava tries to console her saying it wasn't her fault, she thought she could change Dallas but she only ended up breaking herself. They promised not to tell Clarence about the note because he would go over to confront Dallas. Ava calls Rona thanking her for covering her up at work, just then Clarence persuades her to follow him to the feed store just like old times. At the store Ava comes across Benji it is revealed that Clarence had actually set the meeting up, but he's disappointed because Benji didn't bring up his best game as Ava wasn't really interested in listening to him. The next day at church, Ava's dad preaches about divorce and letting go, which makes Ava teary. After the service she confronts her mom about it, but she tells her that Clarence didn't plan any of it, and it could be God's way of sending her a message to start doing better. Just then Benji walks up to her, he tries to talk to her but then Ava isn't in the mood once more. Benji gathers up courage again, he approaches her saying she could talk to him about anything, as he understands the feeling of getting a divorce, because he went through the same feelings during his time with his ex-wife. Ava shuts him off by saying she isn't ready for anything right now. That night, she confronts her parents for pushing Benji on her, she explains to them that seeing Benji wouldn't stop her from going through the pain she's going through. Her father then decides to show her videos of when she was single and when she got married to Dallas. She seems so much brighter when she was all alone than when she got married. He advises her that she doesn't need to prove anything to him anymore, because their whole family is built on misery she shouldn't be a company to misery. During an emotional moment they all bond together. The next day, Ava calls Rona she tells her that she feels different and she is ready to come back to work. Rona is all happy that Ava had returned to her old self and promises to help her ease through everything. That night, her parents brings her to the fun fair, where she meets Benji. She decides to walk up to him. After a brief conversation, they take a walk away from the fair square. During a one-on-one -on -one combo she takes whiskey as they reminisce about old times and how things could have turned out differently if they were still together back then. Getting deep into the moment she tells Benji to make love to her but he refuses to take advantage of her saying if he did that, it would be only to get even with Dallas, he wants Abba's mind to be on him and he's willing to wait till whenever. The next morning after she had gotten herself, Benji asks for her number so he could reach out to her once in a while but she refuses to give him saying she doesn't have a room for anyone in her life right now. She still thanks him for not taking advantage of her. Ava goes back to Atlanta where she resumes work with a clear head. Meanwhile, a picture of Benji and Ava at the fun fair is sent to Dallas. He becomes really angry as he sets out to confront Ava at the bank where she works. He embarrasses Ava yelling that she better come with her lawyer to sign the divorce papers. Rona becomes infuriated, she tells Ava to take back everything that was valid in the relationship because Dallas doesn't deserve a dime. Ava goes over to sign the divorce papers, she is now willing to let go without regrets. When Dallas sees that she signed the papers with so much joy, he becomes mad and justifies his actions saying she is cheating on him with Benji. Meanwhile, Rona takes Ava to her house where she throws her a surprise divorce party, she is filled with joy as Rona introduces her to Benji who she secretly invites to the party. Ava decides to vibe to the party as she dances with Benji. Meanwhile Jim is told that Dallas is outside his home, so he goes out to stop Dallas from ruining the party. When Dallas discovered that Ava is present at the party, he becomes disappointed that Jim took sides with Ava, so he zooms off. Ava brings Benji to her apartment, she thanks him for not taking advantage of her the last time, she also continues by saying if they are to go on this journey together, it won't be for anything but just sex because she is clocking 40 soon. Benji shuts her up with a kiss as the two made out and had sex. The next morning, just as Ava is preparing for work, she is shocked to see Dallas at the dining table eating cereals. Ava orders him out of her house but he tells her that he's willing to give her another shot. She lets him know that she is no longer that scared wife that always wanted to please him, and he should stay out of her life. Dallas doesn't listen, he tells her that he is coming to stay for good, just as he goes upstairs, he sees Benji and then gets into an intense fight with him. Benji is strong enough to pin him down till he's knocked out, while Ava drags his body out of her house with anger. Later that day at work, Rona notices Dallas' truck parked outside the bank, his face is all covered with bruises, so she calls her husband Jim to inform him of the situation. When Rona learns that Dallas came to Ava's house earlier that day, she tells Ava to get a restraining order but she claims she's fine and isn't worried about Dallas. On the other hand, Benji gets a report concerning his animals so he rushes over to his farm. Mr. Clarence had seen all the animal dying and the cause of death could be traced to poison. Benji realizes that Dallas is the only person that could exact this revenge on him. When Mr. Clarence learns that Dallas had come to Ava's house this morning, he becomes furious and heads out to Atlanta. Meanwhile, Jim tries to stop Dallas from stalking Ava at the bank. 
Dallas tells him that Ava had been cheating on him the whole time with Benji, but Jim disagrees saying Ava was a good wife and he knows it. Dallas is furious that Jim would pick Ava over him. He leaves angrily as he continues to plot his revenge against Ava. Benji calls Ava to inform her of what happened at the farm and to let her know that her dad is on his way to Atlanta. With Dallas acting crazy, Ava decides to go get a restraining order. Dallas goes to the supermarket where Ava's mom would always visit every Tuesday. He attacks her and accuses her of plotting with her daughter to disrespect his marriage. She runs away from him while he tried to hurt her. Ava and Rona meets Mr. Clarence changing the locks to the house and putting up extra security cameras. He gives Ava a shotgun to use for protection against Dallas. He then leaves as he needs to get home before dark. Dallas interrupts a double date between Jim and Benjamin. Rona who is fed up of Dallas orders him to leave immediately as she threatens to call the police. But Dallas ruins their night by telling Rona that Jim has been hitting on a girl called Kelly for years and her marriage life isn't perfect either. Just as Rona calls the police, Dallas leaves the building. A perfect night comes to a stop as Rona confronts Jim in regards to what Dallas had said. Jim tells her that it was just one time it happened and he told her about it then. He promises that Dallas was lying about it going on for years and he felt like shit after that one time. Mr. Clarence goes back home to get his guns as he proceeds to go attack Dallas. Although Jean Ava's mom didn't tell him about what Dallas did at the supermarket, he got to know through eyewitnesses. Jean is worried that something could happen to her husband, so he calls Ava to tell her about Clarence. Meanwhile, Clarence goes over to Dallas's house, he warns him not to ever go near his wife or daughter or else he will blow his brains out. Unfortunately, Mr. Clarence is shot in the leg, the Bertrands gang up on him as they beat him up. Ava and Benji comes just in time as they rescue him and take him to the hospital. Ava triggers Dallas, she calls him on the phone telling him about how good Benji is on bed, and he could satisfy her in ways Dallas couldn't possibly imagine. She lures him to her apartment saying she's going to meet Benji and they will make love like she has never done before. The scene switches to the hospital and Benji notices that Ava is nowhere to be found. He calls Rona and Jim to help him with the search. At Ava's house, a jealous Dallas shows up to attack Benji and Ava but he's surprised to see just Ava. Ava tells him that she was a good woman to a fault, and she never disrespected him for one day. Dallas brings out a gun to threaten her but she continues talking, she thought she could change him but Dallas obviously don't want to be saved. She riles him up by saying she is having a good time with Benji and he's so much better than him, this makes Dallas hit her so hard, so she calls the police to report the bruises as her plan all along was to set him up. When Dallas tries to attack her again, she picks up a shotgun from her shelf as she shoots him, letting him drown in his pool of blood. Mr. Clarence is discharged from the hospital as the Bertrands mourn yet again. The end, if you enjoy thriller recaps like this, please leave a like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos.